So this year in high school, I'm a senior, and that means for many of my classmates and I, it's one of the first times in life that we're really seriously considering our futures and where we want to go. And so the other day, I was talking to one of my friends, and I asked him, do you know where you want to be in life? What do you want to do? And he gave me a look. And in that moment, I realized that I was perpetuating something that I really hated when I was growing up. When I was a kid, the question that I really hated was, what do you want to be when you grow up? And to be frank, it was because I had simply no idea. But the same doesn't apply to a lot of my classmates in school. So if these kids had just been asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Rest assured, I definitely would not be one of them because I had simply no idea. But some kids, they seem to have their missions in life planned out, or at least they pretended to, and that was all that mattered. You know, some, they dreamed of the bohemian lifestyle of, of artists, or they wanted to be pharmaceutical researchers or business moguls. It really didn't matter what they wanted to do. The steel in their eyes was piercing. But I didn't really have that. And it boggled my mind that these kids, they seemed to have everything planned out, from where they wanted to go to school, what kind of job they wanted, how big their family was going to be, what kind of retirement plan. You know, typical things a fifth grader would think about. You know, at the ripe old age of 10, I was simply devoid of any direction in life. Shocking, right? But while these kids were focused on this aspect of the future, I was, more, I was in a different place. You know, I was focusing on a much more pressing issue in my life, and that was the daily hardships and struggles of life in the elementary school classroom. You know, instead of worrying about what degree I'd get, I was more worried about whether there'd be tater tots for lunch. And instead of, you know, what I wanted to be when I grew up, I was worrying about how many chapter books I was logging on the class chart. But as I grew older, and this uncertainty in life became more of a pressing issue. You know, who you are, where you fit in, comes to dictate much of your life in school. You know, are you the athlete, the student government kid, the theater kid? It, it kind of really shapes your life in high school. And obviously, none of these are mutually exclusive. You can absolutely be all three of these. But it's without a doubt that these are questions that we begin to ask ourselves as adolescence creeps its way up our backs. Oh, and back to the image of these kids focusing on their futures. This is kind of what I think about, this precocious little child. And that's a lesson that you don't need even mean girls to teach you. It's kind of something that we know. Who you are in high school kind of shapes where you are. Um, so when I started middle school, I had a really vague sense of my identity. You know how some people think it's fun to blindfold their kids, put bats in their hands, and let them beat the air fiercely in search of that elusive pinata? That's kind of how I felt, searching for this pinata that was my identity. And this pinata is literally walking and talking. And if you could get past the fact that he's saying, hey, the fact that he can walk means that he can run away from you. And finding this pinata that's your identity can be a really difficult thing. And so I had a lot of trouble with that. It was like searching for something that I knew was there, but I couldn't see it and I couldn't find it. It wasn't until high school that things started falling into place. I discovered Key Club, which is an international service organization for high schoolers. And in Key Club, I found this community that loved service, that loved giving back. And I could offer my helping hand and spend my time and efforts on pursuits that I really enjoyed. And instead of going straight home every single day after school, I'd go to nearby hospitals and interact with patients. Or I'd go up to East Harlem or down in Bowery, and I'd help at soup kitchens. And on weekends, instead of staying in bed until noon every day, sometimes I'd wake up at sunrise and trek to Deep Queens for a charity walk. And in fact, I'm doing that tomorrow. Um, sometimes I would go to a church in Midtown and I helped cook, package, and deliver meals to homebound senior citizens in their neighborhood. And in Key Club and in community service, I really found where it was that I belonged. And after haphazardly roaming this Serengeti of high school life, I had found my niche, and I found where I could thrive. Um, you know, this potentially foreign and dangerous, scary ecosystem that was high school suddenly made sense to me. I found where it was that I belonged. And I was a volunteer, and community service became my thing. As I did more community service over the years, I began to reevaluate the role of service in my life. And it was at this point that I had a bit of an identity crisis about community service which really is just a melodramatic attempt at making my life seem a little bit more interesting. Because <laughs> who has crises of identity about community service? Well, I did, because I was dedicating so much of my time to service that it seemed to consume me, and service was defining my identity. At one point, I was telling my friend would tease me, and he would refer to me simply as the community service guy. 
Um, so it was a little bit unsettling that this one thing was defining my identity. And I guess it's laudable to be recognized for my passion and helping out and giving back to communities. Um, but to be so narrowly defined was a little bit disturbing. It was like my whole entire life was distilled into this two-word blurb that was community service, and that was all I could really be. And I wasn't very comfortable with that. And I know we often glorify what giving back is and helping out, but I've come to realize that the reality is service isn't always what it seems to be. You know, when you go to a soup kitchen, for example, you're likely to be just another face in a stream of do-gooders who come and go, and you can't really have the impact on people that you really hope you can. And then sometimes you're referred to simply as volunteer and not by your name, by people who don't really appreciate your time. And then you have headlines like these, of celebrities like Lindsay Lohan and Chris Brown being sentenced to X number of hours for whatever crimes it was that they were committing. <laughs> Imagine my response to that. This one thing that I was dedicating so much of my life to, at the same time, people were being punished with service. <laughs> and so, with service getting such a bad rap, and with it becoming less and less fulfilling for me, I began to reevaluate what service meant to me. And it sounds like I'm saying bad things about service, but I'm here to talk to you not about why service, not, not the pitfalls of service, but why I love service so much. And that's because there has been something of a byproduct to my service. When I was younger, I couldn't answer the question, Who do you, what do you want to be when you grow up? But I kind of have an epiphany about that, much like this kid having the epiphany of his life, or looking at whatever shiny thing he's looking at that I really want to know. <laughs> and I now know what I want to be, at least with as much certainty as a 17-year-old can have. You know, when I was doing my service and I was interacting with these underserved communities, I would see people who were so sick and they didn't have access to the resources that they really needed to get the help that they needed. And I realized the limitations of my help. You know, I could try to make their day a little bit better, but ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, I couldn't really affect their lives in the way that I wished I could. And so it was like trying to put a Band-Aid on a wound that I couldn't really fix. And this wound was too deep, and they needed stitches. And these stitches are something that I don't have the capacity to offer. And so service has taught me about my limitations. And once I realized my limitations, I realized that I want to surpass my limitations and be able to offer substantive changes and impact people's lives significantly. And so I realized that service was not what defined my identity. It was actually something much more than that. It made me realize where I want to be in life. And I now know with all my heart that the place I want to be in life is in healthcare. And because all these problems I saw in underserved communities, these were problems that I cared about the most, that troubled me the most, and that I want to be a part of the most. You know, when I was, when I was uh, working in a community garden, and I was picking weeds and planting flowers, I realized that that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't have a green thumb on my body. <laughs> but when I was in a hospital, it just felt right. Community service taught me to define my own identity, and that's something really powerful and that was much better than what I thought service meant for me. Community service inspires, and it was an inspiration to me, and a stepping stone to discovering where it was in life that I wanted to be. And when we're growing up, the question shouldn't be, what do you want to be when you grow up? It should be, who do you want to be when you grow up? The virtues of, giving, of service and giving back aside, that's really the gift that service has given me, an understanding of who I am and who I want to be. And so it doesn't matter how old you are, how grown up you are, or how much you already think you know who you are. There's so, always so much to, un to discover about yourself. And so if there's a takeaway, it's that who you are is always a valuable question to ask yourselves wherever we are in life. And so with that, I encourage everyone to go out, volunteer some time, because you may just unlock something remarkable. Thank you. <laughs>